super creative. We view the cosmos on the grandest of scales. I got a bad feeling about this. Welcome back to Rob Observatory. Tonight we have an extra special episode for you. We're here at the campus of Simon Fraser University where I've been given the keys to the Trottier Observatory. And tonight we're going to use their plane wave CDK 700 telescope to try to photograph Jupiter. It's at a good spot right now. Right now we have a little bit of clouds, but I'm hoping they're going to part and the universe will conspire with us to make this image happen. I have a bag full of goodies. I brought a couple planetary cameras, an atmospheric dispersion corrector, and all sorts of things to try out with their scope. And speaking of scopes, why don't we head to the observatory right now and take a look at this monster of a telescope. my friends we are in let's check out this bad boy the plane wave cdk 700 astronomy nerds bow to your god is this not the craziest setup you've ever seen this is a periscope for accessibility you can put an eyepiece for people with mobility issues or just young or a little bit on the shorter side and they can still access the telescope and experience the night sky. That's really well thought out. Very, very conscientious of them to install that. And then on this side, we have the Finger Lake instrument uh, full frame sensor up here. 36 mil sensor, it's a CCD chip with three nanometer Astrodon narrowband filters. But those will not be used tonight. I think we're gonna come back over to this other side, over here, and we're gonna use this ZWO camera. This is an ASI 071. We're gonna give this bad boy uh, a try, and we're also gonna try a couple planetary cameras that we brought with us and see what we can do. I've never shot planetary before, so this is gonna be a grand adventure. Here's what we're gonna do. Connect my planetary cameras to the telescope, run them into the laptop, and we're gonna do something called lucky imaging. And what we're gonna do is shoot a video clip of the planet. And the premise is, is that the atmosphere wobbles and moves and distorts, but every once in a while it's nice and clear for you know a fraction of a second. So we're gonna shoot a clip for two minutes long and then later in the software, it's gonna pull out the very best individual frames from that video clip, and we're gonna put those together to make our final image. And this is known as lucky imaging. So fingers crossed that uh, we'll be able to stack some frames from this. We're doing a two minute video, and uh, hopefully we can get an image. We're also gonna put in the uh, 460, 462, 465. We're gonna put the other ZWO camera in here in a moment and uh, try and get a little tighter on our subject. So I have Saturn all framed up. I'm doing a screen recording, so I'll, uh, I'll show you that instead. So I've cropped into 640 by 480. We are nice and tight on Saturn. I've tried my best to focus, and uh, I think it's time to shoot a video clip of this and see what we get. Just want to take a second to show you guys the guiding performance of the CDK 700 on this plane wave mount. Look at the RMS. Look at that. I'm, I'm crying right now. All right, so we just slewed over to Jupiter. It took a little while for us to find it at this scale. It's uh, a little tricky, but we found it. I'll, uh, I'll show you what we're seeing right now. This is... Uh, with the 482, we're gonna record some video. You can see a shadow of one of the Galilean moons on the surface of Jupiter. No red spot tonight, but it gives us a reason to come back for a return visit. All right, we've just switched to the 462, which is a much smaller chip, smaller pixels. It gives us a lot more reach, 
And with this telescope at 4,500 millimeter focal length, I mean, we are insanely close. Now I've cropped our frame down to 640 by 480, pretty classic planetary move. And that's given us an extremely tight frame, which I will show you right now. I have never seen Jupiter this close up. I can see the bands, I can see uh, the moon, the shadow. This is remarkable. Uh, it probably couldn't have uh, dreamed that tonight would go this well. Very excited, I can't wait to get back to the Super Creative Studio and start to edit some of these images. Um, you know, and that's a whole new learning process I'm gonna have to go through. And of course, you're coming with me. All right, we are back at Super Creative Studios with our data. I've done all the editing and uh, just gained a ton of experience that I wanna share with you um, that I picked up during this process. First, I've never used an observatory that big before and I've never done planetary imaging before. So I went in there with all this bravado thinking I was gonna shoot a Damien Peach A-Pod winning photo of Jupiter that night and had to eat a big slice of humble pie. I'm really satisfied with what we got, but I think my expectations, because the telescope was so big and such high quality, I think it was a little skewed to say the least. So um, there were also a couple things going on. The seeing wasn't the best and we have that weird periscope thing. Those two refractor telescopes back to back to make that port on the telescope accessible. I don't know what that does to our image. I don't know if it uh, degraded our quality at all or if it was fine, I can't say. Again, lack of experience. And that is the biggest takeaway from this whole process for me is that uh, it doesn't matter if you have this huge multi-million dollar facility if you lack the experience, you're not gonna get the most out of it. So it's always important for us to keep trying things, keep experimenting, keep getting our hands on the equipment and doing shots ourselves. Uh, no amount of research prepares you for actual hands-on experience. So it was great to get in there and do this. Now, without further ado, let's get into our images. First up, we have Saturn. Here we can see a bit of shadow on the rings, which is really beautiful. It gives it a three-dimensional look. And uh, we can see the split, the Cassini division in the rings, which is wonderful. Would I have loved to have a little more uh, resolution on that image? I'm sure. But, um, you know, I'm happy with what we got. And, uh, yeah, that's all I can say. Just uh, super excited that we managed to capture an image of Saturn for the first time. Uh, let's move on to Jupiter, king of the planets. So we have a moon shadow and the red spot. So happy, so lucky, didn't plan it. It just, uh, you know, worked out that way. So maybe the universe did conspire with us on this one. And in case you were wondering which moon that is casting the shadow, that is Ganymede, one of the four Galilean moons. So I thought I'd share with you how I made the images. I'm not gonna do a full tutorial as I just explained several times. Uh, this was my first night doing this, so I don't have the experience to teach you how to do planetary, but I do wanna name drop the software I used and um, just maybe help you get going. And also maybe you know a few things that I don't and you could comment below on how I could have done this better or I could go back and reprocess the data again and get even better results. First up uh, to take our video clips and pull out the very best frames and line those up and stack them, I use software called AutoStackert. So what AutoStackert is gonna do here is analyze that video file. We have a .ser, it also works on .avi, depending on what you're recording. I like .ser because it's uh, typically higher quality, depending on what software you're using and what your settings are. It's gonna take that, it's gonna analyze it, and it's going to pick the best frames from that video. This is where our lucky imaging comes into play. And so it's just gonna take the very best, very sharpest of those frames, and I told it 10%. So it's gonna stack the best 10% of those images together, and then give us a final output, all stacked together nice and neat. And here is what that final output looks like. So it's, Still very orange, I think the color balance is off and it's pretty fuzzy. I'm not seeing a lot of definition and detail within Jupiter. So what we're gonna do now is move over to another free piece of software called Registax. Registax has a couple of tools that we're gonna use to enhance our image of Jupiter and make it the best that it can be. First up is the RGB balance. Um, we're way too warm. We need to balance that out by bringing up our blue tones, our green tones, get them all nicely balanced 
for an even image. So once that's done, we're gonna use what everyone uses Registax for. This is the secret ingredient, the secret sauce that every astrophotographer who does planetary, lunar, or solar imaging uses Registax for, and it's called wavelet sharpening. Wavelet sharpening is uh, a black magic that exists within the software and helps really draw out the detail in our image. It really punches up the, uh, the edge contrast on these subtle little pieces of our image. So it really brings out the bands, it really brings out the red spot, and uh, very easy to overdo it. So a lot of trial and error, playing with the different settings, lots of tutorials online to help you get through this. But, uh, I, you know, I've exposed it to you now. You heard it here. Go get it for free. Experiment on your own images and see how much this actually helps. It's mind-blowing how much better your image gets after Registax. And then finally, I just brought it into Photoshop and uh, tried to give it a little more contrast, play with the noise reduction, the sharpening, the color. I actually couldn't do a whole lot, uh, I would call these images a bit brittle, a bit fragile. You can't push them too far. So you can only do so much in Photoshop, but those subtle little adjustments do help just a little bit, and I think the image is better for it. I think that's going to wrap up our uh, first foray into the Trottier Observatory. I recently became the Imaging Director at the Royal Astronomical Society of Canada here at the Vancouver Centre. So part of our partnership with the Simon Fraser University is we support their outreach programs and starry nights and we get some time on the observatory so I have been so graciously gifted with Tuesday nights in the Trottier Observatory. So I'll bring you back. I'll take you on a full tour. We'll do that in an upcoming video. We're gonna move on to doing some narrow band deep sky imaging soon and it'll be a lot of fun. We'll go back and uh, kick the tires on that big old plane wave telescope. It'll be wonderful. And until then, please remember that the stars belong to everyone. So get out there and see for yourself.